In this next module, let's talk about using the Vue CLI. So the Vue CLI is a command line interface that is optionally used when you want to build Vue applications. So in this module, we're going to talk about using the Vue CLI. I'll show you what the Vue CLI is. I'll explain how to install the CLI. We'll create a new Vue project using the CLI. We'll integrate that project with ASP.NET Core. And I'll show you using multiple pages with the Vue CLI. Let's get started. So what exactly is the Vue CLI? It's an optional tool for helping you along with Vue.js development. It's useful to scaffold new projects. It can be used to simplify builds for Vue. It can support multi-page projects. There's a plugin model where you or other open source authors can and have extended the Vue CLI to do more things. The idea behind the CLI is simply to allow you to get up to speed to build more complex applications without having to deal with a lot of the build mechanics that I've shown you in the last few modules. If you're going to start out and you know you're going to be building a fairly large Vue application, Vue CLI is a great way to get started. If you're just going to add some functionality to a page here or a page there, don't feel like you can't start small like we've shown you in earlier chapters. This is another option. Let me show you what it's all about. So let's install the CLI. You're going to want to be at a command prompt, and this works the same whether you're dealing with Windows or Mac. We're going to use NPM to install it, just like we've used earlier to install Vue. But instead of installing it inside of our project, we're actually going to install it globally. That's the way it works best. So we're going to say NPM install, and the package name is at Vue slash CLI. And you're going to want to use the dash G flag to say install it globally. Once it's installed, you can see the version we're using by just saying Vue, which is the name of the CLI, and I'm just going to say dash dash version. We'll see that currently we're using the 321 version, and if we do Vue dash dash help, we're going to see that it has a number of things it can do out of the box. And the first one, and really the main one we're going to use right now, is create. So like a lot of CLIs out there, if you use view and then the subcommand of, in our case, create, we can still do dash dash help to understand about how this individual command inside view works. And so we're going to see here that we have create, we can specify some options, and then just specify the app name we want to build. Let's build this next so we can see how these options work. So now let's create a project with the view CLI. Back at the command line, we'll see that we're in the after project of the ninth module. What we've actually done here is we've made a copy of that base project again. Instead of trying to fit it into our existing project that we've been building through these modules, I'm going to create another copy of it and just add a brand new view project into it. So you can see how the CLI would be a different approach to doing it. What we're going to do is going to make a new folder called client, and then I'll just go into that folder. And here we want to use that view create command, and I'll just call this our client app as our actual application name. And when we run this, it's going to ask us about different options for the project. And this can be defaults that you specify, like we can see that one that's built in here, the TypeScript full project includes the router and Vuex and TypeScript. You can also choose the default, which is just Babel and ECMAScript lint. Or I'm going to go ahead and pick the features manually. In my case, I want to use JavaScript instead of TypeScript, so I'm going to go ahead and use Babel. I'm going to turn off the linter, but I do want to use CSS preprocessor. So I can mix and match what features I want to be built into this scaffolding of a new project by default. It's also going to ask us what kind of preprocessor, and I'm going to use less for no good reason. So please don't put in the comments, you should be using SAS, it's better. I know. And then here you can also make a decision about, do you want the configuration for all this to be in a separate set of configuration files or in the package.json? I tend to like them in a dedicated config file. And then here I can save the preset for future. I'm going to say no. And then it's going to go ahead and initialize this, install any plugins it might need, and then create the project for me. Now we've built our project. One of the other things I want to do before I walk you through this is I want to talk about another command called view UI. And what this will actually do is allow you to do the same things we were doing a minute ago, but it actually does it by launching a web page to do it. 
So here I can go ahead and create or import or even look at different projects I have. But I'll go ahead and say create. And we can see that that project we had here is already listed. But I can create a new project, which I won't actually complete. But here where you can put the name and I'll just put a name of a folder. I can use one of the presets or go select each feature. You can see that all of these are pretty much the same as what we saw before. It's just a matter of whether you want to use a UI to create them or you want to allow the command line to create them. It really gives you the best of both worlds and works the same regardless of what operating system you're working with. But I'm going to close this down and not actually use the UI to create it. If we come back to this client folder and we look at it, we'll see that what it's created when we created the project is a client app directory. So let's go into that client app directory and we can see that this contains a couple of things. It's created a source folder and that's where all the source of our project. And it's going to try to or allow you to host this in just an HTML file so that you can develop these things in isolation before you actually integrate them with whatever your back end is, usually ASP.NET Core if you're taking this course. And so we're going to see a package.json here, and that's going to contain all the dependencies for this project, as well as some configuration files, one for Babel and one for PostCSS. So the different files are getting their own configuration. So if we go ahead and look at the actual project file, we actually look at the packages.json, which I'll do here in Visual Studio. I actually see it's created a couple of scripts here. One is to serve the project and one is to build the project. Now the idea behind these are to serve while you're developing and to build when you're actually ready to deploy it. But we're gonna change that a little bit. So if we do npm run serve, it's actually going to build the entire project. And under the covers, it's doing this with Webpack, it's trying to hide some of the complexities for you, but it really is just using Webpack in its own special way. So let's go ahead and copy this. And if we paste it, we can see that it's actually run this pretty simple project that is actually just a simple view component. And the idea here is if we have our project here and we leave that in a console serving, if we go ahead and change any of this code, for example, let's go to our main.js and let's just add some semicolons where I actually like to see them. What we'll see actually happened is it saw that a change happened and it did a new compilation, much like what we were seeing with Webpack and Watch, the serve is doing for us. So we can make changes and we can continue to develop if we're just developing it in isolation. Of course, we want it to work with our actual project because what happens is... This page that it generates for us is really just a simple HTML file. It is not an ASP.NET view. And so you might ask yourself, why do I need both? I think ASP.NET Core can really help you build up templates, have a better hosting story, as well as handle things like caching of complex pages while allowing the client interaction to continue to be view. So we're not going to actually use this. What we're going to actually do is integrate it with ASP.NET Core. Let's do that next. So now let's integrate it with ASP.NET Core. The problem we have with just creating it in a subdirectory like we've done here, we have two packets.json, so we end up having Node at a couple of different levels as far as NPM handling our dependencies. We also have an issue figuring out where we're going to actually serve these. They're not in WW root, of course, so we want to be able to change the way the build actually happens. So we're going to do this all at once. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to leave this here in client app for now. We're going to be moving some of these files, but let's start with that package.json that included all the pieces we needed for view to work. If you remember, we also have a package.json for our regular project. So we're going to want to copy the entire dependencies structure here. And we're just going to copy them into our regular project.json. We can put them right before those dev dependencies that we're using. And then in, back in the original package.json from the CLI project, we're going to copy all of these dependencies that we're working with, and we're going to copy them into our dev dependencies as well. And this way we have one place where all the dependencies we need for the project, view and non-view, are all in one place. The last thing is you're going to want to take this scripts block as is and just copy it as a new node here. I would put it after private. This is just going to allow us to easily run, serve, and build as command projects that are going to set this up. 
With those there, before we go ahead and handle them, we're going to want to move some files. So let's start with our config files that are not inside package.json. So the Babel and the post CSS configuration, though if you had TypeScript or some of the other pieces, there might be more configuration files here. But if you followed my example the same, we can just copy them to the root of the store so that they're siblings to the package.json. So we can see those here as Babel, post, post CSS, and then we have our package file as well. Most of the rest of this we're not going to actually need, except what's in source. This is actually the code that makes up the project. So we're going to copy all of this, and I'm going to move it to this client directory we created. And we'll be able to see them here. And then all we need to do is get rid of this client app directory now. There's nothing in it that we actually need. If it doesn't delete the client app directory, it's probably because in the console we're still using this code. So let's go ahead and terminate that batch file. Let's close that console. Let's try to delete it again. So now we're down to the client just being these files. But our original builds here aren't actually going to work because they're in a different structure than it expects them. We don't want to have to run these from within this directory. And even if we did, it wouldn't work because our packages are all at this root. So we're going to need to create a little bit more configuration. And luckily, the Vue CLI has its own configuration file that you can create. And that is just called vue.config.js. So this is a pretty simple small file that just allows us to change some overrides. A lot of the defaults for the configuration for Vue are perfect, but for us, we need to make a couple of other changes. I just like to have the name of the file at the top of it. And what you're going to do is you're going to start with module.exports, and you're just going to create an object. This is just JavaScript. The first thing we need it to do is output to our www root folder. So we're going to put output dir, and we're going to set it to www root, and I'm just going to tell it to put it all in a client directory. So what we'd like to be able to do here is just say source equals the client directory, right? We'd like for this just to work, but view.config doesn't actually support that. So in order to make this work, there's some hoops you could jump through, but the simplest one is really to just use a plugin to the view CLI. So let's open up a console. I'm just going to use view to add a new plugin. That plugin is called source dir. This plugin will allow us to specify the source directory. So instead of source here, what we're going to actually do is say we have an option in our plugin, and the name of this option is actually going to be source dir because that's the name of the plugin. So now that we have the plugin configured, we should just be able to say npm run build and cross our fingers. We can see it actually built this, and it built this by putting inside www root in that client folder we told it to, a JS folder for our actual app, and then a CS folder for any CSS that we're actually building. We can actually see this if we go up to www root. Here's our client and our different files. Now this index.html is one that's generated by the build. You can simply ignore it, but we can see the JavaScript that was generated, the CSS that was generated, and in fact, because images were required in there, it also spit those around here as well. And so this client directory is built completely by the Vue CLI for us. If we go back to the console window, we don't actually want to run that build. That build is a production build, and we don't want to serve it either because we don't want to run a development build, but also be listening on some port. What we actually want to do because we're using Visual Studio to host this is we just want to actually have it build, right? What I'd really like is to be able to say npm run watch, and so that it watched our project over and over and over again, much like we did with Webpack in Module 8. And we can do that by just opening up that package.json. And I'm going to copy the scripts here and create a third one here just called watch. And on the end of build, I'm going to tell it that the mode is going to be development. So don't do a release build, do a development build. That way it's easier to debug. And then we're also going to tell it to watch. And so this will build and watch and rebuild those incremental builds from Webpack every time a change is made. Let's see if this works. So it's built our just app.js, just a really simple version of what we're doing. This will include everything, including view that we need. And if we go to our client directory and just make a small change again, 
make that save. We'll see her over in Watch. It's actually compiled it again, because that was our original compilation, and it's created a hot update support to even be able to update the JavaScript dynamically on the page. And so it really is giving you a lot of value for very little configuration. You looked at the way we did this by using Webpack and TypeScript. This may be a much simpler approach. Next, let's take our app and actually host it on a ASP.NET Core view and see how that works. So now let's add our view project to a Razor view. Now that the project is building and it's actually watching in the background for us, you can see that we have a console window with the watch continuing to run. That's usually how I do these. I'm going to actually open up the view folder and I'm going to open up that index.cshtml. And if you remember back, this is what it looked like to begin with. There wasn't a whole lot here. So the first thing we're going to need is actually a script section to include our app on the page, right? So if we go all the way back up to WW root client, we can just grab this app.js and just include it. And this is, again, the entire project in one file. Now this is expecting a div to be called app. Again, it's going to apply it to a single div somewhere on our page. So let's go ahead and run our ASP.NET project and see if this is actually working. So there we can see our view.js actually working. It's including all of this. Back in the code, without having to restart the project, let's go ahead and look at that client app directory. And our app view, which is that main view, has a bunch of this information in it. It has a simple div that has the logo and such, and has a component called Hello World. So let's look at our components. There's another Hello World. Let's go ahead and actually make a change here. Let's get rid of all these essential links just to clean it up. And if we save it and go ahead and refresh, so as you can see here, we have the view application actually running, and here we have the basis for what we're gonna build. And it already has a lot of the features, the mature features of view that you want. So if we look at the structure here of our client, we have a main.js that just bootstraps it, and then we have app.view, which is that main container, and we just have components we can build. And it's creating components using single page components or single page views. So you could continue to do that, or you can create views separately you can create CSS separate, whatever makes the most sense to you. But this is a great starting place for building this. But what happens if we have more than one project we want to build? Let's look at that next. So let's talk about something called the multi-page option using the view CLI. Let's go down and open up our config.js. And so what we want to do is create a new section for a second page. This main JS that we have in here will continue to be the first view you want, and you can use it in the ways you want. But what if we want to actually create a new one that we want to use on a separate page? So let's make a copy of this main.cs. And I'm just going to call this another for lack of having a very uh, good imagination. So let me open that up, and I'm just going to make a couple of changes here. Instead of mounting it on app, I'm actually going to mount it on pound another. And then up here, I'm going to actually import for app another dot view, which we'll create in a second. And let's go ahead and change this name as well. This will be the component that we're actually storing there. Now, of course, it doesn't have another view yet, so we're going to need to create that. And I'll just say another dot view. And if you remember, in single file components, we're really just going to have a couple of different sections. A template. And we could have code here in the idea of a script. We could have a style as well. But I'm not actually going to use either of those. I'm just going to start with a template and just say, this is for another page, probably contact, right? This way you could build a second component that you might want. And back here, we're going to actually add a new section here called Pages. And pages is just going to take another object, and it's going to have the name of the component. It's going to be another here. And this name is going to be what it's going to generate as the .js file. You can't leave this as app, because they each need to have their own unique JavaScript file that it's going to generate. And then I'll just say client app another .js. So in this way, it wants to know that it's going to build this main project as well as the secondary pages. So if we run watch again, we'll get this weird error. Dependency wasn't found another JS in another JS. What? 
And this is a confusion around case sensitivity. So if you remember and you did it like I did, I created a capital C client here, which worked fine because we had capitalized it here, but we hadn't capitalized it here and case is sensitive in the view CLI. Now, even though the file system isn't case sensitive in Windows, this is actually maintaining a compatibility with Linux and Mac OS. So having these case sensitive here will actually help you later when you need to be deployed. So just make sure you have the same case. And if we run this again, you'll see we're now going to get two JavaScript files, one for app.js and another for another JS. That means if we go ahead and open up the views again, and let's open up that contact page instead, let's repeat what we did a minute ago, which is add a section for scripts. But this time we're going to actually grab another JS, not app.js, that's for the other page. And then let's create or name this div real quick, ID another. And this ID another is related to what we did in the client directory here with another.js. So in this module, I've talked about using the Vue CLI in some pretty basic ways. I haven't delved deep at all, but I have shown you how you can use them to get your project started and to help you with those builds. I've shown you that it certainly simplifies the generation of new Vue projects, especially ones that want to use some of the different infrastructure like TypeScript, like the linters, like the embedding of CSS and the running of CSS generators like Less or SAS. I've also shown you how to use the Vue CLI to build your projects and to build and watch them so that you don't have to be rebuilding them over and over and over again with Visual Studio. I've shown you how it abstracts out the difficulty of Webpack, even though it's still using the benefits of Webpack to build these tree shaken versions of your JavaScript files. And I've shown you how the Vue CLI can be really useful in building multiple different pages worth of views in a single build. And in that way, you don't have to set up multiple webpacks, multiple builds, multiple configurations. You can have one that just spits out different JavaScript files for the different pages you might want to use it for. Thanks for viewing this module. If you have any questions about this module or any others, please don't forget to go to courses.wilderminds.com and ask the questions on the forums.